and let us all that we can to build a better future. Voters. Now, this video in particular, shout out to Case Study QB who uploaded this onto his Twitter account. Please be sure to follow him. He's wrongly being censored. It is a discussion on Morning Blow. I mean, Morning Joe on BSDNC. I mean, MSNBC. As uh, they're talking about how Biden is ceding black support to RFK Jr. in key battleground states. Now, let's be clear. I think we've seen a lot of independent media networks talk about how the Democrats are losing black voters and black support. This is very clear since the Democrats uh, like to use fear mongering and fear tactics. But uh, the base amongst black voters for Democrats are no longer buying it. And to make a to include, make this more an inclusive, larger conversation, I think everyone. No matter where they stand, uh, which generation you're part of, or what where they are in the demographics, um, they are starting to back away from the Democrats. None of them are impressed. I have seen firsthand uh, through numerous reports, not only in the press, but in independent media, about how the economy is putting a stranglehold on every single American across the country. Red state, blue state, doesn't matter. If you live in a big city or a small town, everyone is hurting. And let's face it, we have an antiquated system here. We don't have a democracy. I mean, if we truly did have a, a, a democracy, we'd have ranked choice voting. We'd have multi parties. Dare I say it? We'd have no political parties at all. And we wouldn't have the antiquated system of electoral college, where whoever wins the most electoral college votes becomes president. Popular vote means jack. So this is a discussion about how RFK Jr. is gaining more support amongst the black community. Now, as time progresses forward, we shall see. And again, let's take this with a grain of salt because it's coming from MSNBC and they always have their propaganda. And another thing to point out as well, and this goes for independent candidates like RFK Jr. or Dr. Cornell West, the Green Party or the Libertarians. Who has ballot access? Because it's one thing to write in somebody's name, but ballot access is the key. So this is all right now going to if they especially there's going to be talking about an election runoff, uh, including RFK Jr. against Trump and Biden. Sounds good on paper. If RFK Jr. gets all 50 states so he can be on the ballot, then we have a different conversation. So they could show all the polling as much as they want until RFK Jr. secures ballot access in the different states. Then we have a whole other conversation. So let's go ahead and play this video and check it out. And apologies, folks. It is morning blow after all. All right. So, so let's talk about these polls that taken a year out uh, from the election uh, that you know, I would say don't really mean anything on who's going to ultimately win. But uh, if I were. What are they, a snapshot if, 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 into. Snapshot of where people are right now. Uh, but if I were uh, on the Biden campaign or any campaign that got these type of polls, I'd love them. Because I would be using them mm. to get everybody working from from top to bottom, get them working as hard as they can to to, to double their efforts on these these areas that uh, there's some you know we're seeing some softness again a year out. So these are actually I, somebody said this yesterday, and I'm sure Jim Messina and others who come <laughs> on the show would say the same thing. Use these polls as a way to inspire your your troops to work harder, yeah. work longer, campaign more, especially when you got an autocrat running against you and nothing short of American democracy is on the line. If that can't inspire you. I don't know what does. But. Never forget that morning blow was all in for Trump in 2016. And yes, this video is also going to be about fear mongering about Donald Trump. Look, folks, Please don't give in to fear. Don't let people bully you. And if you see people that are being bullied or being forced to vote Democrat because of thwump and woogie boogie boogie, it's the orange boogeyman, help them out. Help people understand that it's okay to not vote Democrat, vote independent, vote Green Party. Tell them it's okay to consider voting independent. Or use it at, tell them, hey, it's okay if you don't want to vote either, okay? At this point in time, stop being afraid. Go into professional bowling. The polling shows President Biden is losing support among black voters. The White House is vowing not to, quote, make the mistake of underestimating a key group that helped propel Biden to victory in 2020. 
In a new interview with NBC News, Biden's principal deputy campaign manager acknowledged that for the president to win again in 2024, his team, quote, has to have a long, sustained conversations with African Americans and their communities and can't simply, quote, parachute in around election time. No. This comes after a recent survey from the New York Times and Siena College showed Biden seeding support from black battleground state voters to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. For more on that, let's. Now, it looks great on paper. All of this looks great, right? Because Biden is losing support. And yes, to, to an extent, it could be argued that Trump is also losing support. And RFK Jr. as an independent is gaining more ground. Now, I am not a fan of RFK Jr. and this, this, some of his uh, foreign policies. You know, it's kind of kind of lost me there, you know, but especially with what's taking place in Gaza. However, 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 ballot access is going to be key. And this goes for any independent candidate. So all this looks good on paper and in theory looks great. Now comes the hard work, ballot access, ballot access, ballot access. Let's bring in opinion editor at the Washington Post, Alexi McCammond. Her latest piece is entitled, Democrats Need to Get Real About RFK Jr.'s Strength with Black Voters. Alexi, where is it coming from? Hey, well, thank you so much for having me. I mean, I think what Joe said is right. So a couple of disclaimers off the top. Polls are not gospel, it's a year out, and black voters are not a monolith. But one thing that is clear in polling trends, focus group trends, and otherwise, is that black voters and other voters are looking for an alternative. Black voters have long felt and said and showed us that they feel taken for granted by the Democratic Party. We've seen the ways in which VP Harris hasn't been supported as much as some folks would like by the Democratic Party, by President Biden. And the real kicker with RFK Jr and something that is particularly unique to him is that he taps into this deep-seated, deep-rooted medical skepticism that a lot of Black folks across the country feel, rightfully so. There has been medical racism. Okay, yes, there is an issue with medical racism. There is a, a lot to be skeptical about, especially about the health care in general here in the United States. But uh, let's focus on the main issue, the one issue that's going to matter to everyone, not only just to black voters, but to all voters. It's the economy, stupid. The economy. Yes, all these other issues are trivial, but right now, what is the one thing Americans are worried about right now? Providing for their families or either that, trying to survive themselves. Owning a home, renting an apartment, having a small business, how just putting gas in your car, getting groceries, paying the bills. These are monumental tasks that are making Americans struggle day in, day out. That's the number one issue, the economy and who's going to improve our lives. Everything else is second. It's going to be about the economy. And 2024, as much as the corporate media will try and bombard you with identity politics or culture or everything else, the one thing that's going to be on everyone's mind, the top priority will be the economy. This isn't open for a discussion. It's a fact. I'm going back, you know, to the 1800s through now, there is ample reason mm -hmm. why folks might feel distrustful of their health care providers or of what even the government is telling us we should do with our bodies with respect to vaccines. Now, that is not to say that everything RFK Jr. says about vaccines is directly appealing to black voters. But when he talks about these things and brings up the idea that actually maybe they're lying to you or maybe you shouldn't take this vaccine, he's really trying to get at what other folks aren't saying to these voters which is, I hear mm -hmm. you, I see you, I understand why you might feel this way. Rev, curious about your thoughts. I know you have a question for Alexi, but first, can you uh, respond to that uh, about, about Kennedy playing into a deep skepticism that a lot of members of the black community have of the medical community? No, he has definitely played into that, and there is definitely a skepticism, no matter how much we may... Uh, Look, corporate media ignored it. We talked about it. Let's talk about Joe Biden's relationship with the black community. Joe Biden was against busing and desegregation. Joe Biden worked with the Republican segregation. So he gave a eulogy to Strom Thurmond. If you ever look him up, that man wanted this country to be divided through and through. 
Joe Biden sided with corporations. He's even said on the hallowed halls of Congress that he'd gladly prostitute himself to corporations. Joe Biden is the same person who browbeat and yelled at Anita Hill. And Joe Biden is the architect of the crime bill that led the United States to become number one in the prison industrial complex. That's Joe Biden. That's who he is. Feel that it is unfounded. Uh, people have real skepticism based on history. Tuskegee experiment just being one uh, about vaccines, and and Robert Jr. has played into that. He's also been one that has been a hero in the environmental movement, environmental racism that many of us supported his raising that prior to his running. But having said that, Alexi, the fact that a lot of the bizarre stuff. Uh, uh, both politically as well as 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 in terms of policy that uh, Robin has brought out has not been really confronted or counted by the Biden administration. So don't you think that some of what Robert's uh, growing popularity or growing support among some blacks is because he's not been challenged by the Biden supporters on some of the things that he says that are. Here's a real truth the biden supporters they know it in their heart of hearts that their old dog joe biden just doesn't have the fight in him okay he's not the big dog he's the old dog now i've seen old dogs that have a fight in him that are ready to be big joe biden isn't one of them he stammers he stutters he doesn't know where he's at and look it is difficult to watch you know i am not a fan of the biden harris administration but it has to come down to a point this is elder abuse I know Joe Biden ha has a terrible, terrible, terrible history here in the United States. He has been on the wrong side of history. This is a man who's voted with the establishment all the time, every time. But this is supposed to be the leader of the free world at 81 years old. He doesn't project confidence. He apologized to staffers or when at press conferences, he said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't say this. Or he's there for there uh, at the press conference for a minute and then walks away. Really, seriously, Biden supporters vote blue no matter who. What do you got? Because time's running out if you really want to find another nominee. Completely out of, why, uh, out of line with the way a lot of blacks think. I think yes and no. Yes, because when he was briefly running in the Democratic primary against Biden, he was getting a lot of attention. We were all giving him a lot of attention for, you know, the things he was saying at private dinners and otherwise about vaccines, casting doubt on these things and about some of the more outlandish views he had. And that obviously dipped support with some Democratic voters at the time. I think the smartest thing he's done is, is get out of that primary and run as an independent because it takes the heat off of him from the major party. I know that Joe Biden's campaign doesn't even really want to take him seriously. They think and maintain that voters will see this as a two-person race between Biden and Donald Trump. Everything suggests otherwise at this point. Yes, the words I dread to hear. Two old men fighting over a cold bowl of soup. That's what was 2020, and that's what we're going to get in 2024. Yes, folks, I'm absolutely confident that Trump is going to walk away from his legal problems. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. I'll be surprised if he isn't. This point that voters are looking for alternatives, that they want it to be anyone but Biden and Trump. And I think that, you know, black voters are hearing a lot from RFK Jr. about other things beyond vaccines. And I think that's the big issue. He's couching a lot of this stuff in terms of civil rights, as I'm sure you know, Rev. And he's also talking a lot like the like Milei, who was just uh, elected in Argentina, this sort of populist rhetoric that's painting a very hopeful vision for the future. And he's not really focusing on those other sort of outlandish things. And so to your point, sure, maybe if Democrats focus on those things, people would be more aware and, and maybe reconsider or think more holistically about who he is. But he's really staying away from those things. And the Biden campaign so far is sort of considering him as a non-starter. Jonathan, let me hear a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, there is the obstacle of, uh, of Robert Kennedy Jr. getting on, on the ballot. Correction. Debbie Dabbs writes in the live stream chat, two old men fighting over the big red button, the one that says nuke. Goodness gracious. I, I want to laugh, 
but I can't. On a lot of states, we'll actually see as we move forward whether he's going to be able to do that or not. Uh, as an independent, he certainly has more time uh, to, to clear the hurdles if he decides that he wants to do that. But, but I find uh, Alexi's reporting fascinating because you actually have Kennedy, you have two stories here, mm -hmm. tell of two stories. One, he takes uh, away from Donald Trump more than Biden in many polls that we've seen, despite the fact he takes one of the most critical electorates, he takes a good chunk of one of the most critical electorates away from Joe Biden, that is black voters, of course. No one in the black community owes their vote to the Democratic Party. No one in the Latino community owes their vote to the Democratic Party. I'm going to even add this too. No one in the black community or Latino community owes their vote to the Republican Party. No one in the white community owes anyone any, any of their votes to the Democrat or Republican parties. No one in any demographic. No matter what generation, you don't owe the Democratic Party or the Republican Party a goddamn thing. Thank you very much. It is early, uh, and and I, I suspect that what will happen this year is what happens every year. Though there can be a change that people come home, whether it's young voters, whether it's people of color. All of these outlandish predictions I heard going into the 2020 election ended up being outlandish. I suspect the same will be true here, but the Biden campaign does have to worry about this, don't they? The so Biden uh, campaign officials are deeply worried about third party candidates. They don't, though they don't want to give them much in the way of oxygen by talking about them, at least not now, still believing that many of them will eventually drop out between the between now and when the ballots are actually cast. But you're right, RFK Jr. Uh, appeals to sort of the conspiracy theorists group that draws from Trump. But yes, maybe black voters from Biden. And of course, he's not the only potential third party candidate. Uh, Jill Stein, Cornell West, who might have some appeal to black voters. Joe Manchin is also considering getting in maybe. on <laughs> <laughs> Joe Manchin getting getting support from the black. OK, maybe. You know what? Why not? We live in a crazy world. Why not? But see. Again, it's it's always about the fear of Trump and what independents can do. Greens, Dr. Cornell West or RFK Jr. You know, there's all this fear around third parties and independents. It's been quite some time since a third party candidate has secured an electoral college vote. You know, the most famous third party candidate actually secured the presidency is good old Abe Lincoln himself. There's been numerous other incidences and times when a third party candidate could have shook the foundations of this political system. And perhaps maybe we could be walking into that era. Uh, the only way that's going to happen, though, is the monumental task of ballot access. And I know I keep on repeating it, but the more I keep on repeating it, I want you guys to remember it. So if you are a third-party supporter, if you're an independent supporter, if you're with the Greens or the Libertarians, if, was your, if you're with Dr. Cornell West, or if you're with RFK Jr., or if you're with another candidate altogether, the key thing, the one thing to help out your group, your candidate, is to help them get on the ballot. That's the issue. Now, when you choose to vote for a third-party candidate or independent candidate, whoever it is, just remember, don't let anyone bully you. It is your right to vote however you feel like. Your vote isn't entitled to the Democrats or the Republicans. You don't owe them a goddamn thing. And to Democratic voters and Republican voters— Third parties and independents aren't stealing anything from an already corrupt system, and they're not spoiling so something that's already been rotten to the core. Under the no labels banner. So, Alexi, we know that the third party candidates are a threat, but there's also an issue about enthusiasm, particularly among voters of color. That's something that the, the Biden team has struggled with. You know, even in 2020, they ran behind what previous Democrats have done. We, you know, and I think there are real concerns about this time around as well. So, in terms of Democratic officials you speak to, how worried are they? And what can the Biden team do to energize young voters, but particularly young voters of color? The Biden administration can't do jack, especially amongst young voters and young voters of color. Um, look, the, the protests against the bombings in Gaza is right there in front of us. Uh, the economy and how it's impacting everyone's families or themselves um, and how the Biden administration has been lackluster in regards to doing anything to solve these problems. I mean, we are already involved in two wars both of which uh, are draining resources from us. We have a crumbling infrastructure. We don't have student debt forgiveness. We don't have Medicare for all. But yet, what do the Democrats have? 
I've said this and I've been proven correct. Fear mongering against Donald Trump. That's all what they have. You got to vote for us because Trump, 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 Trump. That's all what they have. Yeah, I mean, the statements from Quentin Folks and others from the Biden campaign show that they are keenly aware of what they need to do, which is not take them for granted and not parachute in, as he said, in the 11th hour. That is clear. I think the problem is, is that a lot of this is sort of baked in the cake. I mean, like you look at the relationship between Biden and VP Harris, and I know that a lot of black folks would have liked to see more support for her throughout this first term from Biden and other Democrats. And that's something you can't really understand do. Biden also needs to give these folks a reason to be excited, a reason to vote for him. And a lot of voters are sick of casting a throwaway ballot or what they say is a ballot for the lesser of two evils. And that's one of the big differences between, I think, 2016, 2020 and 2024. I think especially after the COVID pandemic, people feel much more individualistic. They're much more concerned about themselves than they are with group affiliation. That diminishes Democratic Party party loyalty that diminishes loyalty folks might have had to Biden in the past, thinking he would do the right thing. So it's more than just saying the right thing. And I think lastly, VP Harris has been the one, if you look at these same polls, who's keeping Biden in the game. I mean, she's getting support with younger voters, with voters of color, these constituencies that they need to win to keep that coalition together. That was surprising from those polls. I know that a lot of folks, we were sort of thinking she wouldn't have a strong coalition just as she didn't in 2020. But she's been going on these college campus tours and talking to these people that the Biden folks need to do a better effort putting Biden in front of. And it's not going to work. What can we take away from this? Witness a lot of Democrats try and cope. And there's, and there's going to be three ways liberals are going to interact with you. The most diehard vote blue, no matter who people are going to do. The first, they're going to bully you and harass you and call you all sorts of things. They're going to call you racist. They're going to call you a white supremacist. That's right. Even if you're black, they're going to call you a white supremacist. I don't know how that works in their crazy mind, but don't worry. They're going to figure it out. They're going to call you all sorts of phobes. They're going to say that you want to help Trump. Or, or they're going to be like, hey, look, maybe we need your help. You could help us come up with a plan to hold his feet to the fire. And, and, and maybe we could get like $10 off your student debt. They might come to you like that. Or is it that they're not going to engage with you at all, and they're going to be taking a lot of copium a lot of copium and just say, everything's fine. Biden's going to win. Everything's fine. I'm not going to engage in politics. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be a okay. A okay. That's what it's going to be. But the Democrats know they're in trouble. Now, whether RFK Jr. can secure more votes, especially amongst black voters or voters in general is yet to be seen because again, the final word that I have to bring up two words is ballot access. But it should show you that the Democrats for a long time thought that they could keep on abusing their voters, their entire voting base. And they kept on abusing black voters specifically saying, oh, no, no, we promise we'll do this. We'll promise we'll do that. And they're not following through. So black voters and voters as a whole are looking somewhere else. Now, I've said on the show before, 50 percent of Americans identify themselves as independents. And it's coming. I think it's eventually going to be undeniable that we will see more political candidates rise up, more independents rise up and speak out. Would I prefer if people had the proper foundations and infrastructure and resources necessary to have a strong third party slash independent campaign? Yes, I would. I think uh, a lot of the candidates right now are just shooting from the hip and they could be doing, and they should have been doing so much more, but the ink is already dry, and it's already happening. But 2024 will be an interesting election year. And I'm very curious to see how the Biden-Harris administration are going to handle the election year when they know all too well that their former support has, poof, evaporated. It's going to be interesting to see. Tune in to Hardlands Media.